Greetings builders, Daniel here and welcome to the second part of my 6 expectations of starter builds for the Necropolis League. If you missed the part 1 don't worry, you can find its links in the video description. And if this video helps you please, leave a thumbs up to support the channel. Thank you very much and let's get into it! Let's start with a true classic, the Essence Drain Occultist with the Witch Class. Essence Drains a skill that drains the life of your enemies and even restores your life by a percentage of the damage dealt. Since it can only be used in one enemy at a time, we also use Contagion to spread the damage, resulting in an amazing increase in career speed. To get the pros of this build, I would start with how easy it is to play. You just need to cast Contagion and Essence Drain to watch the whole screen of enemies melting before your eyes. This character is also very easy to put together because it doesn't need any mandatory unique item, and above all of that, it's very safe with many defensive layers. Now to use the cons, the first thing that comes to my mind is the boss damage. Even though this is a very cheap build, you need to invest several divine orbs to have a big single target damage. But don't worry too much about that, this build is meant as a red map farmer and it kills map bosses easily even on a low budget. As for budget, this build is very cheap, you can get it destroying early endgame maps with only around 35 chaos. To comfortably advance to yellow maps, you need to invest around 100 chaos, and for easily completing your atlas, I recommend investing around 4 divines, but you can totally do it with less. Don't forget it on poebuilds.net you can find a list with all the equipment that you need to buy for this build, with direct links for examples being sold by other players. For clear speed, I'll give this build 10 out of 10. When you get a big area of effect in your contagion, you kill enemies way beyond your sight with only one cast. The boss damage on the other hand is a 7 out of 10. It will take longer than usual to kill guardians and pinnacle bosses, but you have no problem against regular map bosses. For the survivability, I'll give it 9 out of 10. This build comes with over 100,000 effect HP because of high armor, high evasion, spell suppression, amazing life regeneration and even a little bit of block chance. Next, we have the most beginner friendly of all, the Arc Totem's Hierophant, also with the Templar class. On this build, we use many totems that cast the Arc skill for a fast and safe clear speed. Listing the pros of this build, I would start with how cheap and easy it is to complete your Atlas using this beauty. With almost no investment, you have a powerful, safe, and fast character that will be the perfect currency farmer for this and future builds. Now, to list the cons, this build doesn't have access to evasion or spell suppression, but don't worry, totem builds are very safe to play. Another issue is that some players might find this gameplay to be a little tedious and too easy, but as you know, this is just a matter of taste. As for budget, you can get it destroying early endgame maps with only around 35 chaos. To comfort but advance to yellow maps, you need to invest around 90 chaos, and for easily completing your atlas, I recommend investing around 3 divides but you can totally do it with less. This build needs 3 mandatory unique items, but they are normally very cheap and easy to get. The first one is the Soul Mental Armor, that causes Sakata Gems to be supported by a level 20 spell totem. This grants us an extra support skill gem. We also need the Kikazaru Ring to counter the effect of curses. This is because of the side effect of Soul Mental that will apply a random curse on you whenever a totem dies. Finally, we also need the Self-Flagellation Jewel, that grants up to 20% increased damage for each curse on you. Thanks to Soul Mental, you'll be always with around 9 curses, resulting on 180% increased damage. For clear speed, this build gets 9 out of 10. Arc is an awesome skill that chains through many enemies and easily clear big packs. This build comes with 4 totems casting this amazing skill. The boss damage deserves 9 out of 10. With the right debuffs and all 4 totems summoned, this build can take even big bosses down without any issue. For the survivability, I'd also give it 9 out of 10. As a totem build, you always be far from action while your totems do all the work. So, if you know how to mind your position, you can easily complete high tier maps with low grade gear. Above all, this build still counts with high armor and high block chance. Finally, we have this incredibly tanky melee build, the Bone Shatter Juggernaut with the Marauder class. This build is perfect for the melee enthusiasts out there. Bone Shatter hits enemies so hard that it hurts your own character accumulating trauma stacks. For each trauma, you're going to deal and take more damage. That's why it's important to gather both attack speed and armor to stack many traumas and sustain their damage. 
To reach the pros of this build, I would start with survivability. Even though you deal damage to yourself, this build has so much armor that you won't feel a thing. Now, because of that, you might think that this build had to sacrifice speed or boss damage, but no, it's still super fast and can kill guardians in just a few seconds. Now, to list the cons, the first thing that comes to mind is that you need to keep an eye on your accuracy. This is because the Keystone precise technique that grants 40% more damage if your accuracy is bigger than your life. As for budget, this build is cheap. You can get it destroying early in game maps with only around 60 chaos. To comfortable advanced to yellow maps, I recommend investing around 120 chaos, and for easily completing your atlas, I recommend investing around 4 divines. For clear speed, I'll give it 9 out of 10. Bone Shatter also creates a big pulse of damage when stunning enemies. That means that a single blow can kill an entire pack of monsters. Other than that, you stack a lot of attack speed that causes your leaps land to almost teleport you through the map. The boss damage is also great and deserves 9 out of 10. Using Berserk on bosses causes you to accumulate a lot of trauma stacks and deal huge amounts of damage. For the survivability, this build is surely a 10 out of 10. And I would even like to say 20 out of 10 if I could. This build achieves almost 200,000 armor and over 83% of all elemental resistance. All of that combined with the Juggernaut Ascendancy grants this character over 300,000 effective HP. Yes, it's crazy. And that's it for today guys, don't forget to stay tuned on the channel because starting this Monday I release 12 definitive starter builds for the Necropolis League, all of them with POBs and detailed guides. I wish you all an amazing day and don't forget to keep building!